What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Blue Nitro, back with another video for you guys, and today, we got a brand new video. That's about Jalen Brown, so let's get right into it. So, uh, today, we got the news that Jalen Brown has agreed to a contract extension uh, with the Boston Celtics. So, we'll read the tweet right here from Shams. Breaking, Boston Celtics star Jalen Brown has agreed to a five-year, $304 million super max contract extension with the franchise, per sources. This is the richest deal in NBA history. Negotiated by agent Jason Gloshan or whatever his name is, fully guaranteed with a trade kicker, no player option. I don't know how to feel about it. So obviously, you know, congrats to him. You know, he got his bag, man. It was this is long waited actually because um I think after the season ended around that time he was or maybe a little bit before that, but it's been a bit at least you know like a month and a half since he was able to get this contract extension. Right, I don't remember exactly when, but it's been a bit. Right, he could have gotten it, but they were negotiating it. I guess uh you know all these other like clauses and like you know. I guess, you know, little details in it, right? Such as, uh, such as the trade kicker and, like, the guarantees and, um, you know, the trade options or any player options, stuff like that, right? That's what was, you know, holding it up. $304 million, That is crazy. He now has, yeah, like I said here, he has the richest deal in NBA history. So he's making the most money. Like, he has the biggest NBA deal out of everyone, right? And we'll talk about the numbers soon, but, man, it is crazy. Five years. Because it's like, obviously, Tatum was their best player, right? And at times, Jalen Brown couldn't really... uh you know, like in the in the playoffs, I'm pretty sure he averaged like 22 points, five rebounds, four assists, or something like that. Getting 304 million for that, like I know in the in the regular se regular season, right? Obviously, he's really good, right? He averages like what 25, 27 points, something like that, and like you know a good amount of boards, etc. Like we know he's really good, right? He can you know he can shoot the hell out of the ball, stuff like that. We know he's really good, but the thing is, when it comes to the playoffs, is different, right? He doesn't play as good, right? That's just my opinion. Doesn't play as good, and even this year we saw at times. Um, other players on the team were outperforming him who shouldn't have. And that was like on a somewhat consistent basis, right? Uh, at times, he's like their third or fourth best player, right? And some might even say their fifth best player. But yeah, so obviously that kind of sucks. And the fact that you're paying three or four million, uh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna um, come with some restrictions, right? Because of the new CBA, right? But the Suns did, right? The Suns kind of were in the same boat, right? Obviously, they got Beal, right? And then they had three people under, or four people technically, or four players technically under the max, right? And with that, they faced uh, restrictions. So I have the Celtics, obviously, they're going to face some restrictions as well. The new uh, CBA rules, etc. right? Obviously, the salary cap is going to be the big change for them, right? Uh, because they're you only get like two max players now, right? Like really max, like this big contract max, right? Because he got this big old deal, man. The Celtics are going to be restricted now, right? Obviously, that was one of the reasons why they didn't uh, retain Grant Williams. So obviously, they didn't really see him as that important, right? That was one of the things. But also, also because uh, they wouldn't have had enough money to retain both uh, Grant Williams and Jalen Brown, I'm pretty sure, right? So that's why they just like go with him because they couldn't risk, you know, losing Jalen Brown, right? Obviously, they want to keep him, right? They didn't want to trade him for anything, right? Because uh, they see more value in keeping him than what they would get in return, right? Especially with uh, last season with only being a year on his contract, right? Before uh, the season ended, right? So obviously, they got their extension. And with that being said, he can't be traded for about a year now, right? Because uh, he signed this, you know, big old contract extension, right? And here's the breakdown. This is from Bobby Marks. Here's a breakdown on Jalen Brown's super max extension in Boston. So in the 24 to or the 2024 to 2025 season, he gets around 52 million, right? Okay, that's a lot still, right? Even the first year is a lot. And each year, it uh it gets increasingly more, right? More money. It goes around, I think it's yeah, around like four four to five million each year, right? So it goes from 2024 to 2025 is 52 million. 2025 to 2026 is 56 million. And then 2026, 2027 is 60 million. And then 2027, 2028 is 64 million. And then finally, 2028 to 2029 is 69 million, man. That's crazy, right? No, you know, no pun intended. But yeah, 69 million the last season. And then that totals to about 303 million, right? Whatever, round to 304, right? Get the point. That is crazy. In his last year, he's getting 70 million. And the problem with this is that since, like, you know, there's the inflation rate with the new CBA and stuff like that, right? The salaries get inflated, right? So players are worth, like, for example, 12 million. We're making 20 million this year and stuff like that, right? Uh, you know, just we're just seeing this whole bunch of people getting like you know bigger contracts, right? Yeah, like this is gonna continue. Obviously, this is never gonna end, right? It's gonna keep on getting more and more, I guess, dramatic, right? More, you're gonna see more people getting these bigger numbers, right? Even though technically, technically, it's I don't know, it's a complicated one because technically they're getting the same amount. If you think about it, it's just because of inflation, right? For the most part, but if you just look at it just from the number itself, right? For any like I guess context, you could say it is a lot, right? The main problem with this contract is like. It could potentially be untradeable, right? Because you got to make up the, for example, say you trade him, say the Celtics trade him in his last year, right? Where he makes around almost close to 70 million, right? By that, that's like years from now, right? Whatever, four or five years from now, right? So we don't even know how the Celtics could be, right? They could be completely like destroyed by then or whatever, right? Or maybe they won championships, something, who knows? But etc. If they trade him that last season, they're going to have to 
the other team that's trading for him is going to have to make up the that seven uh, the seventy million right, which is a lot. But by then, like the assets aren't going to make sense because you're not going to get many good assets. Because by then, the issue is a whole bunch of people's contracts who are like I said, people that are supposed to make twelve million are not making twenty million because of the salary cap, right? So with that, the sellers aren't going to actually get many good deals, right? Because all the other good players will be making more money. Even more than this, I know that sounds crazy. And also with that, other teams are not going to want to trade for you know star players as much as, or as often now because how big their contracts are, and then the restrictions with that, right? The new CBA changes, right? Your team gets heavily uh, penalized for having honestly star players, like really big star players. Like if you have two or more, pretty much your team gets penalized, right? In terms of the salary cap and the types of players you can sign, right? Like your mid level stuff. I'm pretty sure the Celtics on their mid level is gone because of this, right? So that sucks. But yeah, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. Like I'm pretty sure I saw from uh, a tweet today, right? Uh, I said that CBS Sports or whatever was saying that uh, Shea, he's going to get, he's the next one to get a big deal, right? A bigger deal than this. And it's around 400 million they're predicting. So that is crazy, you know what I mean? And also next week here from Bobby Marsh saying that the projected extension is based on $149 million salary cap in 2024-2025. Obviously, the salary cap projection could be, you know, uh, higher or lower when we actually get to 2024-2025, right? So the number of his contract could actually change, right? So the final number will be determined next year. And obviously, that makes sense, right? Because that's when um that's when the season will actually, like, you know, when this next season will end and when that 2024-2025 season will actually, you know, somewhat, you know, you could say begin, right? And they'll determine the money there, right? Because by that time, right, you have everything figured out, all the data and stuff, whatever, etc. they need, right? They'll know what the salary cap is by then, right? And then it says, obviously, Brown is uh, ineligible for a trade for a year, right? We talked about that, which, uh, you know, obviously the Celtics knew that going into this. Uh, yeah, so like it says here, the Jalen Brown extension is the richest contract in NBA history, surpassing, here's a fun fact, it surpasses the $276 million Supermax extension Nikola Jokic signed in last July, right? Obviously, back then, that was monumental, that contract, right? Obviously, Jokic was MVP and stuff. But giving Jalen Brown, that's the difference, right? Jokic was MVP, and he was only getting $276 million, right? And that was the biggest contract back then. But Jalen Brown, man, the amount of money you're paying him, you expect him to be your clear-cut, no-run option, like, pretty much like an MVP player, right? Like, one of the top players in the league. To be honest, you can't really say that Jalen Brown's even a top 10 player in the league, right? Maybe not even top 15, right? You can make an argument about that. So that's the crazy thing. You're paying this much just for not even be one of the top players in the league, right? And his ceiling, obviously, he's getting better each year, right, for the most part. But his ceiling, he won't be one of the top players, right? Especially when he's playing with Tatum, right? Tatum, right? You can't, like, Jalen Brown, it just, this is a fact, man. Jalen Brown can't reach his, whatever his potential is, right? He can't get as good as he wants to, like, an MVP caliber because, you know, he's got another MVP player on his team, right? Or he's got another player that's really good on his team, right? Who's an MVP caliber player? Jason Tatum, right? So obviously, one of them has to take a lesser role, right? Get less touches, obviously, you know, uh, do everything, you know, at a lesser level because, you know, that's how it works, right? You got to uh, give and take, right? So that's the thing. Jalen Brown is going to be hard capped, right? In, in terms of like, you know, his talent because of Tatum, right? He's playing with someone on the level of Tatum, right? So that's just how it goes. But yeah, man, paying this much, that's ridiculous. And now that means the Celtics are going all in on this team, right? On Brown and Tatum, right? So if this doesn't work out, they are screwed, man. If this this contract more than likely will turn out to be bad, right? They're, even if Jalen Brown plays really, really good, if he doesn't even play like an MVP level, man, which I doubt will happen, right? Because, you know, he's playing beside Tatum, right? So it can't really work like that. But yeah, even if he does, it still could be a bad contract, man. Honestly, 70 million, man. This extension is ridiculous. And yeah, like I said, we'll be seeing more and more of these. Seven years ago, or whatever it was, when Mike Conley got that, you know, big extension in history, that was 149 million or something like that. And that's because they're huge in the time, right? Because, you know, like I said, inflation and everything is causing these uh, dramatic changes in numbers, right? And also here, it says, here's what Boston could be on the hook for if the salary cap jumps 10% over the next two seasons. It's pretty much just tweet saying if the salary cap jumps over 10% next season, right? Starting 2024, 2025, Jalen Brown would be getting 304 million. And then uh, Tatum, starting 2025, 2026, will be getting 338 million, right? Obviously, right? The Their contracts would start, those big contracts would start then. And man, that's just crazy. That's crazy. We're not even seeing the end of it right now, man. So yeah, let me know what you think down below about the Celtics, man. You think this is uh this is it, man? You think they're gonna win the chip finally, or do you think this is a bad move? Yeah. So I get it for the Celtics, right? You pretty much had to do this, right, or else you you know risk you know losing him pretty much. So obviously they didn't want to do that, and they believe in you know Jalen Brown. But man, three hundred four million. That's a tough pill to swallow, cause yeah, no matter what, even no matter how good he plays, to be honest, right? Obviously skills gonna be hard cap, but no matter how good he plays, this contract just. You can't really justify it, to be honest, man. I get why they did it, but man, it's tough. It's a tough pill to swallow. So let me know what you think down below. And will the Celtics still be in the same position as they were before this contract extension, right? So like, will they still be kind of like, you know, will they still be kind of, you know, stuck, right? Or will they win a chip or something like that? You know, let me know what you think down below. And that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.